uh, Eddie Hearn of Matchroom. So good to see you, Eddie. You? It's a pleasure. It's nice to see Oscar. Yes. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fascinating dynamic here on the program. <laughs> uh, Don't know why I'm here, really. I, I mean, you're uh, you're Eddie Hearn. Exactly. Yes. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a day, Eddie. Well, it's good to see you. Um, fun event. Wow, I don't even know where to begin. What a time to have you in here. Congrats on a fun event in Orlando. Yeah, great. The Caribe Royale, nice spot. I've been there. It's turning into a bit of a boxing hub. Really. Yeah. It's, it's nice. It's got a 2,000 room and a just under 4,000 room. Okay. And everything's on site. The fighters love it. Great atmosphere. Belanga was sensational. We needed it. And yeah, re really good spot for boxing. How long have you been here? In, in, in this office, in the studio today? How long? Like, how much did you hear of... of... Oh, I heard, yeah. Well, I, I saw Devins and I saw Ryan. Oh, okay, you saw everything. Because I knew I you flew Austin. in today. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I was a little yeah, nervous yeah. about that, if I'm being honest. They told me that's you're right, flying in. Oh, no, it's like every time I'm in New York. Yes, I appreciate that. Here. This time with the family, too. Got my kids here. Yeah, they're out there. They're uh, in the green room. Isabella, Sophia. Hello. Hello. Uh, begrudgingly? Uh, no, no. Massive fans of yours there. Of mine? Oh, huge. Wow. Yeah, I'm big yeah. with the youngsters. Huge, I don't know if you know huge. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good. It's hot. It's, uh, you know, Is it's this been lovely, but, chat, you know, Walter Park, Universal Studios, Disney, all, all, mi of it. all mixed in with press conferences, weigh-ins, stuff, so... And when they hear you saying this right now, are they offended or no. are they aware that no, we, we, you know, you're it's, open, it's, honest? Yeah, okay, weird. so you were going to Disney in between? Yeah. yeah. Golly. So, but it's it's, it's, it's a one-off, but it's been, uh, it's been a nice experience. Okay, so why are you in New York? Well, I'm here for Haney Garcia. I mean, okay. you know, I, I heard all the stuff. Well, like, tell me your response. No, I mean, um, the deal was done between Golden Boy and Bill. We had a matching option with Devin, which we decided not to get in the way of for some financial benefit, and obviously to help promote the show. You know, I think a, a, a fight of this magnitude, I don't sound egotistical, but needs the goat, really. So, you know, they brought me in, brought in the big guns, and uh, just here to support Devin, really. We've, we've been working with him for five, six years. Contractually, after this matching right, we have nothing with Devin, other than to present him with opportunities. Obviously, he's got Devin Haney promotions, um, and yeah, just, just really pushing a great fight. I think it's a wonderful fight. Is it worth it? Like if, if you're not financially involved, involved, is it oh, worth it? financially involved. Oh, you That's are? That's the whole point, yeah. Oh, that yeah. is the whole well, point. Yeah, I wouldn't be if I wasn't. I mean, Okay, so, you know. so uh, correct me if I'm misreading, but the, the, the picture that was just painted in mm -hmm. front of me was that you have no financial involvement. Oh, I do, yes. Okay. Yes, I, I, I and how does that work? Just because we had a matching right with Devin. Okay. So obviously we weren't going to exercise it for the, the best interests of the sport and Devin and particularly DAZN. DAZN, right. So we're not involved with the promotion, the logistics, but you know, here really just to support Devin and, and help him where needed. I'm happy for him to take the lead. The fight is in association with Matrim. Yes, we've got our logos everywhere, nice, but no real involvement. I'll okay. let Oscar take the, take the limelight and build, but I think it's a brilliant fight. You know, I think um, I have to take my hat off to to Ryan and Devin. I mean, Ryan reached out to me quite a while ago and said, I wanna, I wanna make this fight with Devin, what do you think? And I, I didn't Post tank? Really... Yeah, 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 this okay. is like <clears throat> three months ago. Okay. Or less, two months ago. Um, and I didn't really believe him, to be honest with you, because I think it's a very tricky fight for him. And, you know, he, he seemed genuine. And then he moved on to Roly Romero, which actually was probably the right fight for him, because it's a much easier fight. Right. That fell through, and then he messaged me again and said, look, I'm back. And obviously then Oscar and Bill picked everything up and away they go, and I think it's brilliant for boxing, brilliant for DAZN. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's the perfect fight for DAZN. You know, um, two different fan bases coming together. And, you know, I think, as you know, always champion the platform. But, you know, on a level, from a global position, from a US position, from a UK position. It's the one thing I didn't hear too much of today. I heard Ryan push it a little bit, but the zone is the home of boxing, the global home of boxing. You know, coming off obviously Belanga last week, you've got coming up Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney. We've got Taylor Catchrell the week after. You've got Joshua Ngannou next week, which we'll come on to, no doubt. You've got Fury against Usyk as well. I mean, it's just, it's it, by far and away, the number one platform for boxing. So this was a really big catch for them. And I was surprised it happened. Why is that? Just because really from Ryan's side, like Devin I've known for a long time. When I was working with Devin, before he, he was, he was a bit unlucky, Devin, because actually he was built into a mandatory position. He was chasing Vasily Lomachenko. Mm. And 
I wasn't sure about that, but he was adamant. That's what he wanted me to deliver. And then Top Rank requested that Lomachenko get elevated to what was called franchise champion at the time. I don't know if you remember. Mm -hmm. And Devin became really a paper champion. That's what he got, an email champ. That's what they called him. And it wasn't his fault, but he defended that title. And it was only really, you know, after he fought Jojo Diaz and Linares, but then he flew to Cambosas in his backyard, won the undisputed, had to go back for a rematch clause. And that was difficult for us because, we, you know, we're pretty close, but he had to take that deal. And we always dreamt of having our first undisputed champion in America, and we always talked about it. But he had to take that deal. Two wins, comes back, beats Lomachenko. Tight fight, but, you know, I thought it was a great performance. And then he's promotionally free again, moves up a division, fights Regis Progre, shutout victory. He will fight anyone. Like him, I really believe that him and Bill have no fear in fighting anyone. So I knew he'd be up for it. But I think Ryan deserves a lot of credit because coming off the tank victory, uh, defeat, the Duarte victory, jumping in again, Devin's very difficult to beat. Very difficult to beat. And um, I think Ryan deserves a lot of credit because these are the fights we want to see, especially two young guys in their prime. Normally you get sort of the back end of the career, okay, I'm looking to cash in. But, you know, Devin, as I said, always up for fighting anybody. But I think Ryan deserves a lot of respect as well. How do you feel about the location? I like it. You know, Are you I'm, surprised? Uh, I was surprised that there seemed to be a lack of understanding of where it was, but I, I like the move to the Barclays Centre because, you know, one, I think New York is a, a fantastic you know, venue and market for big time boxing, but that venue in particular, you know, Madison Square Garden is second to none, the mecca of boxing, but PBC used Barclays Centre as a base for a long time. Mm -hmm. And... It, it's really been dormant in a boxing sense. I think it'll do really well. Obviously, the gate, you know, I get, the, I heard the conversations and, you know, it's it's um, going to affect the financials of the show. But, you know, from a vocal point, and we'll see if Canelo Alvarez fights. Don't forget, if he does fight on May the 4th, it's only two weeks after. So does that take a little bit of shine away from the fight? But I really like the Barclays Centre for the fight. I think it'll be a, a fantastic atmosphere. Is that true what Devin put out based on what you know and your business relationship with Canelo that MGM doesn't like for a big fight to be so close to his fight? I don't fights? think anybody does. You know, I think yeah. it's not just those Canelo fights, it's any fight. Okay. You know, if you're talking about, you know, Cinco de Mayo and a big fight announced for Canelo Alvarez, does April 20th become a little bit of a tough sell? Nothing's ever going to outsell Canelo. Nothing's ever going to overshadow Canelo. But two mega fights so close together is never ideal. So, you know, but again, that's got to be formally announced anyway. So um, I understand, you know, Ryan's from LA and it's there's a lot of money to be generated in Las Vegas, but I really like the fight in New York. I, th I think it's a good fight for New York. Is this your first interview of the day? Yes, it is. Okay. Why do you think I'm rusty? No, not at all. I was going to say, how dare you? No, no, not at all, not at all. You never are. It's it's uh, remarkable. I mean, you do like nine of the same interview throughout Fight Week, and, and it's it's wild to see. The reason I say that is because I do want to put a pin in uh, in in Ryan Devon talk because mm. I feel like there's a lot of people waiting to hear your thoughts on Canelo. Uh, so I'd be remiss mm. if I don't. Since we're talking about him, I, I need to jump in there. Mm. Based on what you know, is he done with PBC? <clears throat> I mean. I've seen a lot of reports that I've had a lot of phone calls from people saying, yes, congratulations, Canelo's coming home. Get your pyjamas on. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, you know, I think you've seen from the reports that obviously the initial route that, that they pursued of the three-fight deal looks like it may not be happening or it's not happening. Um, me and Sal talk a lot and, you know, we've, we've spoken recently in the last couple of days and... Uh, there's nothing, you know, I went back to a couple of the, the Mexican media today, that there's nothing confirmed with us, just a couple of conversations. Um, of course, from our side, it would be a dream to bring him back to Matrim and DAZN. It would kind of be the icing on the cake for the platform with everything they've got planned as well. Um, I really believe that the Jaime Munguia fight is a really big fight. I think, you know, two kind of split fan bases, if you like, a little bit in Mexico. You know, when you're a great like Canelo Alvarez, not everybody loves you. His, his, his fame and his appreciation, his adoration is, is huge. But there'll always be someone that wants to knock you off your pedestal and a young undefeated Mexican in Jaime Munguia. And the difference is, you know, when I spoke to Sal and I think what people don't understand about him is he will fight absolutely anybody. 
Like, he, he actually thinks it's quite funny when people think that he wouldn't fight Benavides or he wouldn't fight Crawford or he wouldn't fight these guys. But the one thing he wants more than anything is great fights. Mm. He wants people to come to win. And I think he was really disappointed with the Charlo fight in terms of how it played out from a match perspective. Like, Charlo felt the power early on and just tried to survive. Canelo wants someone that comes to him with ambition to try and win. And that's why we float the names like Belanga, you know, and I appreciate Edgar probably needs one more marquee win, or not, but, you know, I get it. Jaime Munguia just stopped John Ryder. More than has the credentials to fight Canelo Alvarez. David Benavidez as well, great fight. That they're the fights that Sal wants because he wants someone that comes to fight with him, not just to try and survive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I think the, Ch the Charlo fight, the second Charlo fight, fell through. One, because commercially it just wasn't a seller. And two, I don't think, after fighting the brother, I don't think Sal, you know, like he, he's astonishing the fact that he just loves to fight. Like, and I think when you talk about someone like Munguia coming for his crown or Belanga or Benavides, they are the fights that excite him. So... Um, yeah, being honest, I'm going to do everything I can if he's available. Is he available? Yeah, I mean, I, I, by are the they sounds done? of things. From, from, by, by, by the sounds of things, by the sounds of the report, by But I know you know more than the report, obviously, yeah, from what you can say. Yeah, I, you know, I don't want to say too much, but, but what I will tell you is I would, I would like to, to work with him again in May and in September and for the rest of his career. You know, we had, we had a great run. Mm. And um, in this sport, God, there's some cowboys, you know. It still fascinates me, this business, you know. <laughs> In what respect? Just sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes even when I talk to Dana, you know, that, that people in boxing, like I look at some of the organisations and I look at some of the promoters and I just think, wow, you really don't know what you're doing, do you? You, you know, there's a saying, I won't swear per se, but there's a saying in England, it's called pissing in the wind. Mm -hmm. And what that just means, it's just like you just... You're all over the place. All and over the gaff, dare I all say. All over the gaff. Yeah, yeah. And people take positions on fights. People take risks that are just unfathomable. And when it, when it goes right, it's okay. And when it goes wrong, it can ruin your business or, or the fighter might not get paid for months and months and months and months. So I think people who have worked with us know that we're just different. And I think Sal knows that as well. And I want to try and get in a position where I can provide a pathway for Sal to end his career with us. And I'll do everything I can He's a businessman mm. as well as a fighter. Fighter first, businessman second. And the deal has to be right. It's not just, oh, I love Eddie, you know, I love Matrim. The deal has to be right. And, and he'll, he will make you work for the deal. And hopefully we can work hard enough to get his approval. Were you surprised Oscar was so dismissive of Munguia versus him? I don't know if he was working me here or not, but I, I, don't he know. Was I like, mean, no yeah. chance. Yeah, I mean, how could it be strange, no chance? You know, we've obviously, we're in very extensive conversations with Jaime Munguia, ourselves, and DAZN, which he will know about. So Recently? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, okay. we, you know, to make a play for that fight, we've got to make sure there are two people on board, not right. one. So there's been extensive uh, conversations backwards and forwards to make sure that we can try and move forward with that fight. For me, if the Munguia fight's out, no problem, snooze to us, but if it is, then we'll move Edgar Belanga straight in. You know, he, him and Keith Connolly called me last night and said, it's a small cut, we'll go. And I promise you this, Belanga will, will turn up and he will try and win that fight. It'll be a bloodbath, but it'll be Mexico against Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. It'll be a young man, you know, with, with plenty about himself that will come to win and he will give you a great fight, win, lose or draw. But I do think the Munguia fight is a, a very big fight. Is, it, is that the front runner, you would say, at the moment? I think... Uh, it, Saul would fight anybody. Belanga is the mandatory with a WBA now. So at some point, I'm not saying he has to fight him now, right. but at some point in the next six, nine, 12 months, he will have to fight him. Maybe he gets it out of the way. But I like Munguia. I like Munguia now. I like Belanga maybe in September or Benavidez in September. But, you know, again, this you're talking about the greatest fighter, really, of the current generation in Canelo Alvarez and a man that has no fear of anybody, even in the back end. And by the way, he has earned the right to fight whoever he wants. Like, he, look at his resume. It astounds me that people still question his resume. Look at it. It's unbelievable. 
but yet he's still not just looking to have easy fights around the world and just cash in. He wants to fight. I see the, the thirst in his eyes, the hunger in his eyes, but he wants someone who comes to fight. And those, those three names that I mentioned, they're all cracking fights. What do you make of the state of PBC now, given this... And, you know, the, the Amazon deal hasn't quite kicked off just yet. It will in March. How do you feel about where they're at right now? I like our spot. You know, I think we're in a great position. I mean, you know, again, we backed the zone and they backed us many years ago when we believed streaming was the future. And, and there's been a lot of pot shots from people who are saying, oh, they're on an app. They're on an app. I mean, right now, you know, PBC are also on an app. And I think that they would do anything to be with the zone right now. The Amazon deal looks to be a pay-per-view only model with no regular shows. And that it's impossible to run a promotional company or a promotional business and develop fighters unless you have a schedule that can do so. You can't just have pay-per-views. And the problem, I've been there before, you know, when I was with Sky, we were doing so many pay-per-views and you end up kind of like just stuffing a load of fights together to make them a pay-per-view. And if you look at the first offering on Amazon coming up on March the 30th, that's a classic example of a fight, of a card you've just bundled together to try and convince the consumer that it's pay-per-view. Tim Zhu against Keith Thurman. I mean, like, I, really, I find Tim Zhu really exciting. No one knows who he is in America. Keith Thurman hasn't boxed for two years. It's an absolutely dead fight. You know, there's some good stuff on the card, ish, Roley against Pitbull. And, but what you end up doing is, you know the only way you can run your show on Amazon is pay-per-view, so you have to build one. And if it's the wrong time for your key stars, it's okay putting Javonta Davis against Frank Martin or something like that as a pay-per-view headline. But when you kick it off with, you know, it reminds me a little bit, actually, of when we started with The Zone. We didn't actually have the talent. We, we were just starting. We were trying to sign fighters. I ended up doing my first ever show on The Zone in Chicago. When I look back now, it was an unbelievable card. It was Jesse Vargas against Thomas Delorme. It was Arta Betabiev against Callum Johnson. You know, there was three or four other world championship fights on there, but it was like a panic job, Ariel. You know, it's like, oh my God, Jarrell Miller was fighting. I mean, it was like, just stick a load of, and hopefully it's big enough. But it didn't have the standout main event. And that's the problem when you do a Thurman against a zoo. It's just going to bomb. And if you continue to do pay-per-views, and this is, again, we, we always talk about the price point for the U.S. market, $79, $89. It has to be Canelo Alvarez. It has to be Haney Garcia. It has to be the one that you as the consumer, the fight fan, say, I'm not missing it. Boys, girls, let's get around the house. Let's make a night of it. And that's a Haney Garcia. That's a Canelo against Munguia. That's a Joshua against Ngannou. That's a Fury Usyk. They're pay-per-view fights. Not Thurman Zhu with Rowley on the undercard and Jerron Ennis against his mandatory. Bomb. And that is the problem with pay-per-view in this country and, and worldwide as well. So who is your competition now? If PBC is not that, who would you view as your top competition? And you can't say no one. I think Top Rank are a very good company. Okay. You know, I think they have a very good broadcast deal with ESPN. Um, Do you think TKO is going to try to buy Top Rank? TKO being mm, UFC, yeah, WWE. Yeah. Uh, I think if TKO are doing anything, they're doing it with us, probably. Oh, yeah. Just because I think they're smart. Um, Has that happened? Has, no, have, not those, really. I mean, I was with Daniel in Vegas doing, yes. a couple did of that, weeks ago. Did that get brought up? Not really. I don't think, I mean, I think the boxing arm, I think it's going to be very interesting what happens with the ESPN contract, mm -hmm. which is up in about a year and a half, mm -hmm. something like that, with top rank. You know, if you lose that contract, you're really in a poor position, you know, do do TKA move in and take over the boxing arm on ESPN? I don't know. Anything could happen. Um, I don't know. I'm sometimes not sure what Dana thinks about the boxing market. You know, I think he's one minute he likes the look of it, then he's not so sure. I think it's his, like, it's his North Star because I think in his heart he's a boxing guy. Yeah. Not to say that he doesn't, but well, like. I think he might be a slap guy now. <laughs> That's right. You know, I mean, like I was that. astonished. Yeah, listen, I, I'm, I've never really been a fan of the slap. Yeah. Lee, slap. Yeah, yeah, something. But when I was with him the other day, he was explaining to me the model, the numbers, and it's a huge, you know. Did you go to it? Was it, no, was it the same no, weekend? Didn't no, I did No, okay. but listen, I mean, 
You were fanboying around Dana. Wow, I saw I you. I always do. You yeah. love it. I know you don't. I know no, you're not, no, you, know, you love I know it. You don't like it when I do that. No, 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 you no, like no. Fanboy around you. No, no. I great. like to, you. Give him great props, but, and but he listen, is. He I always, is worthy of I always that. treat people how yes. they treat me. No, I'm, I'm just taking yeah, the piss. And he's say. always, you know, one. He's been extremely courteous to me. He's always brought me in. He's, you know, the first time I met him was there for a couple of hours, touring around, going to the new um, Apex, which was actually being built at the time. You know, when I went to UFC London, he stuck me next to him by the cage. And, like, you know, I think I think that, you know, I've heard him talk very negatively about Oscar and Bob <laughs> and right. st- actually all the guys that also right. don't like me. Yeah. So there is, like, kind of like that allegiance. But I respect the business and I, I respect what he has done. And don't forget, a lot of what we have built through Matrim is based around not the model from a fight perspective, but the model of a, a corporate fight sports business. Mm-hmm. And also what he has done as a face of the business or the sport is a you know there, there's a there's a method to to my madness of how I've done the same thing you know I, I'm not looking to be the star of boxing but I need to have that prominent profile to be able to bang the drum globally and, and nobody is promoting the sport of boxing globally you can talk about you know top rank they don't do international shows they might do a co-pro in Japan every now and again but they're not on the ground building events in localised markets with a broadcaster like we are. You know, Mexico in Oaxaca last week. Then we're in Orlando. Then we go back. We're in Saudi Arabia. Then we're back in Sheffield. You know, then we're back out again in America, America, Italy, Spain, Australia. So that's our model. Um, and I don't see, you know, these other guys like, you know, I think Oscar does a good job. I think Oscar's a legend of a fighter, you know. Um, it's just a different type of business. I saw you guys do the face to face, and I thought that was like the uh, the coming together. Yeah, I'll be honest. Like, I think Oscar talks about wanting to work with other promoters and stuff like that. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. You, don't you, you have to understand. Oscar was, he is maybe he's a superstar. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's very difficult. But for me, all the fighters that I represent the ones that are making their debut over four rounds. They're my boss, right? I work for them. I do as I'm told under the direction of my fighter. I find these promoters find it very difficult to accept that same role. And, I, you know, if you were a pound-for-pound pound great fighter, how can you bring it upon yourself to say that this young kid that's starting his pro career is my boss? You know, Bob, that older generation... The fighter used to work for the promoter. The business has changed. We work for the fighters. They are the talent. They are the stars. So for me, I have no problem with that because I respect the game. I know it well enough to know how difficult it is. But also, without the fighter, we have nothing. But these other promoters, they don't, they don't think. They talk a great game about, we're for the fighters. We're for the fans. I don't have an ego with it. Honestly, not at all. <laughs> no. But it's very different, you know. I have an ego, but not in that respect. One of the best things we've done recently is the stuff with Queensbury. Mm. You know, the 5v5 coming up in June, you know, the partnership in, in Riyadh. You know, next week, Ariel, we have the World uh, Masters of Snooker, the Riyadh Season oh, Masters of Snooker. Yes, yes, yes. On the 4th, 5th and 6th. And then we go into AJ and Garno on the 8th. Will Barry be there for that? He won't be, actually. No. Has he, he been to be, Riyadh? Actually. No, he might be. That's his baby, yeah, no? Isn't, sure. isn't this baby? We've got a lot going on at the moment, but... Yeah, I think so. I think so. Anyway, the, the, what I was wondering regarding, uh, and we'll get to Riyadh in a moment, but have you ever had a relationship with a fighter like his relationship with Ryan? It is fascinating to listen to him talk about Ryan. Like, I, wouldn't can't, be, I wouldn't want to be in that relationship. He can't speak to him. No. That blows me away. I wouldn't want to be in that relationship. So you've never had anything it's remotely so, close. It's so toxic. Right. But I just feel like at what point would you just sit down with someone, you know, and go... Mate, this ain't good for none of us. So we've got a couple of options here. We can either walk away and agree something, or we can work it. You know? But I don't I don't want to be involved. Like once you reach a level in business where it's not the be all and end all, it's about enjoying life. It's about enjoying the journey. You know, this Saturday, we've got a young man called Ray Ford. He's fighting Kolmatov on ESPN for the WBA featherweight championship of the world. 
When we launched in America, I signed Ray Ford. He was, he was a baby. I remember him walking into the office with all his family, right? You know, sort of like, we've built him and he's done a brilliant job to the World Featherweight Championship. On Saturday night, he has the chance to become really what I think, an, a, an American star. That is the most enjoyable thing. We've never made a cent out of Ray Ford, and maybe we won't, but that journey, that night on Saturday, if I can jump over those ropes and see that young kid and all his family become a world champion and change his life, that is the beauty of what we do. Mm. The business is the business. You have to run a proper business. The moment the relationship becomes toxic with a fighter, like the worst, the worst PR you can ever have is a fighter talking negatively about you. Because I want every fighter that we've worked with, you, you don't have to agree with everything we've done, but all I want you to say is they were honest, they delivered their promises, and they paid on time. Mm. That's it. And, and really, anything else, it's the worst publicity, especially internally, because fighters look at it and go, why is, why is he saying that about him? You know? Um, and it's going to be interesting, the build-up to this fight. Like, there will be an implosion. And one of the problems Ryan has is really that emotional, mental side of that relationship as well. Because you've got to prepare for a fight. How can you be 100% if you're emotional or if you're in an argument or if someone's getting on your nerves? I don't know. It's a weird one. Mm -hmm. It is a weird one. Super weird. Mm. Um, and like, I, 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 to the point where they don't want to even see each other. Talk to each other. They were both here and there was no... Like different corridors. Right. Weird. Um, so, all right. So, so you have, oh, you mentioned uh, Saudi Arabia. Let's mm. touch on that. Uh, and by the way, it, j just before I get into that, you, you mentioned uh, Ford fighting this weekend. I wonder if, the, I, was, I was thinking about this. You had Smith fight in Quebec City mm. against, you know, he was a big underdog, mm -hmm. let's be honest, against Better Biev. Then you have Ryder mm. fight Munguia, also an underdog. Do you feel like you're willing to put these guys out there to fight these other fighters with other, and they kind of dunk on you? And the, but it's like, it's but not- boxing so weird, like, I mean- one, we're very lucky to have you know such what I'm saying? passionate yes. fan base. Yeah, yeah. And the, you know, the, the digital interaction, the conversation that's driven online is like no other sport, boxing. I mean, MMA, I know, has it, but if you, if you match a fighter easy, right, everyone moans. When you put him in the deep end and roll the dice and get beat, oh, I can't believe they've stuck him over there against Better Behave. Right. What are they doing? Oh, Ryder, he's got Ryder beat again. What about the money they made, the dreams they were chasing, the legacy they were trying to create? Well, you know, the whole point of sport is to reach the highest heights. If you get beat, if Ray Ford gets beat to Komatov on Saturday, who's a very good Uzbek fighter, fantastic amateur, like, there's still a future. And this is where the sport of boxing is getting it wrong. Don't worry about rolling the dice. If you roll the dice in a tough fight and you're not good enough, you can come again. Make sure you get financially rewarded for it. But also, that's what sport's about, trying to be great. Like, I hate padded records. I hate people that don't want to lose the O. There comes a time when you get built, it's time to press. The, my dad calls it the button, you know, under the desk. Mm -hmm. Where you say, you know, now it's time. It's a trap door. Boom. It's time. And that comes in every fighter's career. And... and they should be chasing that, and they are, but the fans need to just, like, if you lose a couple, it's okay, you know. Well, you but... know who doesn't believe in padded records? Francis Ngannou. Because mm. he jumps in there, he fights Tyson, now he's fighting AJ. I, I would love to get your take on this. You probably weren't paying attention. You had your own show on Saturday, but the PFL, you know who the PFL is, right? Bellator. Yeah, yeah Bellator. They had the, okay, very nice. Come on. I, I, hey, I don't know. What do you think I am? I don't know what you're paying attention Come to. On. You I'm knew about that show? paying attention to everything. Riyadh, you, you saw I'm that? paying attention to everything. That's why you're the man. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't think he'll ever fight for them. And especially, what I was told was, if he beats AJ, mm. the fight will be, his PFL debut will be in December. If he loses, they want it to be in late summer. There are some people who believe that he will just never fight. Like he's, the train has left the station. Mm. He's so, even if he loses to AJ, there's a ton of guys that he, he could fight Parker. He could fight, who knows, and probably make a lot of money. Do you think that there's any merit to that? That he I, has become so big in the boxing world? I think if he gets destroyed by AJ, I think he'll fight MMA. I think if it's competitive, certainly if he wins, mm -hmm. he'll go on and potentially fight Tyson Fury. This fight's gonna tell us a lot. 
because every time I talk to you, I get very scared <laughs> and I just get a little twingling in my stomach because I know you think he could win this fight. Definitely. But I love AJ, by the way. We're, we're good mates now, yeah, so to, please don't drive anymore. a wedge. Now you've said that. No, no, no. I just mean no, but you know, punch like, a chance. So, yeah, absolutely, by the way. Yeah. You know, and this is not like when I went to the gym the other day to see AJ. Yeah. He taking this like this is a, you know, Tyson Fury times 10. He's taking this fight so seriously because, you know, Frank Warren talks about the jeopardy in this fight. That's a great word for this fight. Because if you get beat, you've got beaten by a zero and one guy. But when Turkey Al Sheikh, His Excellency, says the winner of this fight will go on and fight for undisputed against the winner of Fury Usyk, that to us is a dream chance because we chased that for so long. And I, I can't tell you how much I believe AJ is going to beat Francis Ngannou and then he's going to beat the winner of Fury Usyk and he's going to become undisputed heavyweight world champion. Now, that might be that guy which we talked about earlier with Ray Ford, the guy who's on the journey, the big fanboy. That's me. I see a side of him that I haven't seen for so long. Before he fought Otto Wallin, I went in the change rooms and he was hitting pads with Ben Davison. And I was like, oh, my God, he's back. And I've never seen anything like it, you know, punching with ferocity, confidence, tactically completely on the same wavelength as Ben Davison. Like, and I hoped that it would translate in the performance. It did. Now we're going to see. It's a week this Friday, Ariel, this fight. Mm. A week on Friday, two giants will meet in the ring in Riyadh. And when you say giants, this is the first time AJ's fought an opponent that outsizes him. This guy is huge. I mean, you've been around him plenty of times. When I turned to him at the press conference and started talking to him, <laughs> and then I turned to AJ, it was like a cruiserweight, you know, and a heavyweight. So this is a real threat. And when those two come together, press conference, weighing, and in the ring in Riyadh, this is two, this is, this is Godzilla and King Kong. This is like two ginormous men. And anything can happen in this fight. You land one shot on the chin, it's over. And, and whilst I tell you I'm very confident AJ's going to knock him out, and I am, I also see, and you will see a, a promo that's dropping. You may have already seen it, knowing, knowing your connections. Okay, but in the next couple of days. And, and it made me just think, maybe this is just one of those guys you hit on the chin and nothing really happens. So it might have to be a systematical breakdown of smart boxing, but I still stand by what I tell you every time I see you. Mm -hmm. I do not believe he can walk into elite level boxing and beat these guys. Now, against Fury, was it a great performance? Yes. Was it an a underprepared Tyson Fury? Yes. Was it a confused Tyson Fury about what he was getting? Yes. We've got 10 rounds of footage to dissect Ben Davison and Lee Wiley and the team. It's much better than none. Mm -hmm. But I'm nervous. You're nervous? Very Legit. nervous. Legit. More nervous for this than Otto Valin? Yes. Yes. One, because you just don't want to be losing to this guy. Right. And two, because this guy is built different. Why do you say it like that, by the way? A little disrespectful if I'm not. Because he's that. a zero and one guy that no, you should be losing to. Why do you say that? To? He's not. He's a UFC champion. He's never been anything. He's walked the walk. Like, Eric, He's been in there 25 minutes you. against yeah, Daniel let, Cormier. Let me flip it back to you. Like, I don't know. Not Daniel Cormier. Tyson me Fury or Alexander Rusik going into the cage. But they still are fighters. They're not but bums off the as, street. But as soon as you get in a clinch, really the fight's over. The fight should be over. And you translate that into boxing, that in, in, a, in a tactical battle with a good stand-up boxer like Anthony Joshua, you should be much too good for this guy. Like... Mentally, the, the, one of the big challenges in this fight is the mental aspect. You mustn't fear this guy, Ngannou. Well, and that's very difficult not to do. Right. But you've got to be aggressive. You've got to be smart. You've got to be vicious in your attacks. What you can't do is, is let him feel like he can walk you down, get you in the clinch, overpower you. Because he didn't, he didn't want to be that active against Fury. He liked the breaks. You've got a box at a rhythm and a tempo that will actually tire him out. Because I promise you, if this is a fast-paced fight, by four, five, six rounds, this fight's over. He won't be able to stand up. Fury let him rest. But one thing also, which we can't necessarily fathom, is the confidence that that fight gave, gave Francis and Garner. 
That's what scares me more. Because this guy's just built different. Mm -hmm. he, he, he has no fear. He should actually be half petrified that he's fighting a guy that has boxed for 10 years at the top level. He, he should be thinking, but he's not. He's thinking, one of these on the chin, and it's all over. That's what happens when you've survived shark-infested waters and you've been put in detention no, centers. Like, no, none, none of this is, this is all a walk in the park. No disrespect to AJ, no, listen, but like the guy... They're both... Cut, look, I mean, <laughs> AJ's come from humble beginnings. Yes, no. Got I himself in trouble, but Ngannou's on another level. And the fighters know that as well. Do you know what I mean? They, yeah. they, they know this guy's a serious player. Like, you've only got to listen to the story to know he don't, he don't mess around. The, the, the scene in October was unlike anything I've ever seen with all the legends mm. there and the pomp and circumstance. What, if anything, can you tell us about what they have planned for next Friday? Yeah, are, are I they mean, expecting listen, I think to do something similar? You know, His Excellency has always got unbelievable things planned. I mean, you know, one again, it's a great card. They're coming thick and thin, these fights. And that's, as we know, at doing a show nearly every week, it's quite difficult logistically from a promotional sense to actually get everything right when you've got so many events coming. The February 17th fight was a blow, you know, Fury Usyk falling through. But this this one, and then building up to, of course, Fury Usyk on May 18th, and then June 1st, Bivol Betabiev with Matrim Queensbury 5x5 five five on the same night. Like, you can just expect, I can't wait to get out there. You know, I actually said to His Excellency, I think it was last night, I can't wait to get back to Riyadh. <laughs> and people will think that, Oh, he's just saying that. He's to, like, this is a special place. And the events are of a magnitude that I've never seen. Never seen. And I'm very honoured to be in the mix of people that are involved. One, because it's obviously it's good for our business. But two, I'm getting to see things that I thought, like Bivol better be such a great example of a fight that commercially might never hit the numbers in the US that you need to satisfy the fighters. He comes in, he looks at that fight, he loves the fight, he just makes it happen. Mm -hmm. Then you put Match and Queensbury on, on the same night and it's like, where's that come from? And, and we get to see that fight. Can you imagine Bivol better be? He's such a great fight. And that's really what's been lacking in boxing, just making those big fights. And I just hope that all these fights that get made, it's difficult because of the money the fighters are getting paid to make those fights happen in, in their domestic markets. But I just hope that fighters and teams and managers particularly just understand that being in big fights is actually beneficial for the career, win, lose or draw. And just money in a sport like boxing still has to be, you know, I don't always like to say it in front of fans, has to be the primary driver. It's a dangerous sport. You've got to try and leave this sport financially secure. But chase the dream. Chase the legacy. Chase that night when you get crowned champion, you know, when you drop to your knees and you're there, all the dreams that you had as a kid come true. Don't let boxing, don't let money, don't let the advisors just make you think that it's purely a business. Never take away from the glory of the sport. And that's why greats like AJ, like Canelo Alvarez, who have got more money than they could ever have dreamed of, still get up and train three times a day and want it more than anybody. It's such a great point that you make, and it's the point that baffles me. Again, I'm not trying to drive a wedge between you and Dana, but he keeps saying, hey, it's hard to get Conor to come back because of all the money. And, I, and I'm calling BS on that. I think Conor wants to fight, but he keeps saying because he has all the money. But here you are. You just said it. AJ, Canelo, those guys make just as much as Conor McGregor, and yet the MMA fans continue to be told it's hard to get Conor back because he has too much money. Yeah, it's I mean, I talk to Conor quite a bit, and... I believe he wants to fight. Yeah, so do I. Uh, but I, I still think he's going to want the deal to be right. You know, I think. But I think come, he actually doesn't make as much as Canelo and AJ in that. No, I agree. But that's there a comes a point where, see, sometimes you'll do a show where you have to give them what they want because it's in the best interest of the sport and the business. You know, maybe I could make more money on a small show than I do promoting Canelo Alvarez, right? But what does it mean to my business? What does it mean to DAZN? What does it mean to my reputation with fighters and my opportunity to sign young Mexican fighters coming through? So in many instances, you take a bath to deliver. Mm. And if it was me, and it's not me, and he certainly doesn't need my advice, Dana, 
but I'm bringing McGregor back, whatever it costs. Because he injects an enthusiasm and a vibrancy into the UFC that no one else can. can. Agreed? Like, mm. there is no one in the sport that can make it happen for the UFC and MMA like Conor McGregor. When he comes back, the press conferences, the build-up, the value of the business, the ratings, the pay-per-view numbers, Biggest the digital combat, interaction. Exactly. In my opinion. Do you agree? Yes. So what I'm doing, and again, it comes back to, you know, where, you know, it's, it's no surprise that sometimes with these guys, you know, over the years with AJ, you know, you start off on a percentage, it goes down, it goes, we joke about it all the time, me and him. But that's just what happens when someone's earning a huge amount of money. And, but what AJ has done, not just for British boxing, but for Matchroom, you know, he's helped build our business as a boxing business and a, and a sports business by having one of the biggest stars in the sport align with our company and our corporation. So for me, I'm on the boat with Connor and I'm talking till I get it done. Mm. And I'm reaching a deal. But he, he will be hard work, Connor. Don't, don't worry about that. But worth it. 100%. Right. Legend. Great self-promoter. I mean, I don't know if he's still got it. You'd know more. But you put him in with someone that at least, you know, you've got a good chance of winning. But what he can do for, you know, the UFC. But I guess sometimes when you talk about major corporations, like TKO and that, that level, maybe there's a, you know, it's like, no, this is the deal. And that's what happened with Vangano, isn't it, really? Mm. I mean, it was like, take it or leave it. This is your money. You won't get anything like this. And off he went. And whether he got lucky, whether it was earned, which I believe it was, you know, he got it. Mm -hmm. He secured the bag, as you say. As I say. But for Connor, whatever it takes, I'm bringing him back. That, that's, you know, because he can do what nobody else can. And he knows it. Right. And that's a, that's a very powerful thing. Um, I'll, I'll ask you a few quick things, then I'll let you go. I don't want to keep your kids waiting. I feel mm -hmm. bad. They probably want to kill me at this point. Um, when will we get the five-on-five five rosters? Looking to announce it next week. Oh, wow. Actually, yeah, the cool... While this, you're out there. Yeah, that's oh. the plan. Um, can I break it? I've been breaking all the news You there. can't break the fights, no. but what you can... I mean, the matchups. ups you know, And I've got to say, like, I don't want to sound like just a His Excellency fan. Right. <laughs> but I am a His Excellency fan. I don't mind saying it. Because a lot of these concepts, a lot, a lot of these formulas are his idea. So we talked about Queensbury versus Matrim for some time. He was the one that says, let's make it happen. Five, he actually announced it at a press conference, impromptu. Like You didn't know? Well, we, we talked about it, but he just said, yeah. this is happening. And this is the day. And the format is all his idea. So we choose two weight classes, Matra. Mm -hmm. Frank Warren and Queensbury choose two weight classes. And he chooses a wild card weight class, right? Once you announce those weight classes, you don't know who you're picking until it's announced formally. Wow. But you'll know the weight classes. So at some point, probably this week coming or early next week, the weight classes will be announced. And then the, the chat starts, the interaction from the fans. Who's it going to be? You have to pick your best available fighter from that weight class that's willing to fight. So, you know, I don't know. If it was light heavyweight, he might say Anthony Yard. And I might say Callum Smith, you know. If it was... And they have to agree. No, they have to. He, he, you won't know. We, we, none of wow. us will know until His Excellency says, weight class one, light heavyweight, Queensbury, who's your pick? Wow. And then we announce our pick. It's going to so, be like Champions League. It is, you that's, but that's the will thing. Will you film this? You should film yeah, this. of course we will. But oh, you the, are, okay. But the great thing is, the, like I said, the interaction, yeah, the debate, yeah. you know the weight classes, but you've got that period of time until the announcement where you just don't know who's going to meet. That's brilliant. But it's funny because although myself and George, Ryan and Queensbury, we're all like chummy chummy, we're, we're both desperate to win, <laughs> like desperate. You're going to see us on the night screaming and shouting. I think we're going to put up some kind of bonus for the team. Like we, it's, it's going to be a real team event and we have to win. Like we can't, I know it's friendly friendly at the moment, but we want to destroy Queensbury. Yeah, and they like, want to destroy us. It reminds us, so. me of you sitting next to Jake at Taylor Serrano. I was watching some of that the other night. Yeah. That was tremendous. That's I was, why I think you, I hope you're at Barclays on April 20th. Yeah, of course. And you're cheering. If I'm allowed. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but that would be great scenes, right? You're cheering on Haney. He's cheering on. Yeah, like, people want to see that. Yeah, of course. And that's what you'll see on the 5v5. Oh, I won't just be cheering on. I'll be in the corner. 
I'll have the spit bucket. <laughs> I'll be in there between rounds. But going back to, that's, that's life for yeah. me. Do you know what I mean? That's like, there's nothing like it. And that's, again, going to Ray this weekend, stuff like those moments, seeing a fighter go on and achieve their dream, that means so much more. But winning, winning is everything. And you don't always win, you know, but you never lose, you learn. And that's the key with boxing. That's what fighters have got to understand. If you're in the right fights, if you're rolling the dice for the right amount of money, don't be afraid. Chase greatness. Uh, This weekend, I'll be in uh, Puerto Rico for yeah, Amanda Serrano's yeah, yeah. Uh, homecoming. I'm looking forward to that. Is there any chance she wins and we revive the talks with Katie Taylor? Is there any chance of that um, happening? I mean, she, she or Jordan or whoever it was messaged me the other night saying, look, would you, you know, is that a, a fight that you'd be interested in? Recently? Yeah, yeah, like okay. a week ago. Okay. I just went back and said, look, Katie's fighting in May and we want to make the Chantel Cameron trilogy. Okay. If we don't, she's got a load of mandatories to take care of as well and there may be an interim fight before Chantel, but she's going to fight Chantel, subject to the deal. But then when you look at the fights beyond that, I think there's three fights for Katie Taylor of, of, of magnitude. Chantel Cameron, three. Amanda Serrano, two and Alicia Baumgartner. Mm. That's a great fight. And, you know, I think she just wants, she's another one, like Canelo Alvarez. She just wants the biggest fights. She understands every now and again you have to take care of a mandatory, but really, she just wants the biggest fights. Like, really, most people thought she'd lose against Chantel Cameron in a rematch, right? She wants to fight her again. Like, there's part of you that should go, well, we won that one. That'll yeah, let's do move me. On. Yeah, yeah, that'll do me. No, she wants to fight her again. Serrano fight, probably one of the greatest fights ever seen mm-hmm. at the Garden. She wants it again. Now, Baumgartner, who's dangerous, can really punch. She wants it, you know, and she's 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 amazing. So they're the fights, and who okay, knows so what's so going Cameron on. is likely next. Yeah, I think so. I mean, so again, three arena. Yeah, probably. I mean, Stupid we keep Croke flirting Park. with. To be fair to Croke Park, we had conversations, you know. So they tried. They, they were at least open to discussing it. I don't think a lot of these organisations are mad about staging a boxing event, if mm-hmm. I'm honest. But, you know, when I talked to Katie about it the other day, she's just like, we need, to, we need to get something locked in. So let's keep the chat going for the summer. You know, maybe we have a mandatory in May. Maybe we fight Chantel in July. Oh, August. okay. I mean, okay. I, I definitely don't rule out the possibility of fighting at Croke Park. But I think... Three Arena is more likely in May, if we go in May. Any chance you talk to Terence Crawford? Now there's also reports that... Well, there's so many fighters from the PBC who are looking to yeah. jump ship or looking for a date or... Can you jump in there? It has to... The, you know, the business has to be right. Like, Terence Crawford... The problem with Terence Crawford is Terence Crawford against X. It just doesn't do the business that Terence needs for his number. You know? Mm. But this is what leads to inactivity. Look at Deontay Wilder, right? He had, what, well over a year out of the ring. I think he'd done 20 seconds in 18 months. All because he wouldn't take the money that was on offer for a run out. Then flip the switch to AJ, who's boxing four times in 11 months, and took the money against Franklin and Hellanius that no one else, Deontay Wilder wouldn't have taken it. I'm not fighting for that kind of money. Mate, you've got to get active. You've got to build the profile. You've got to stay ready. You've got to keep relevant. But more importantly, when you get into a big fight, you've got to be prepared. And that inactivity killed Deontay Wilder. And AJ, guess what? Took two smaller paydays and then bang against Wilder and then double bang against Nganu and then treble bang when he wins the Undisputed Championship. You've got to stay active. And that's the thing with Terence Crawford. When was the July. Spence fight? July. Okay. So what, with nine months now? Eight, nine months. He's got nothing planned. He's not going to box before May or June. He's going to be out of the ring nearly a year again. Take a fight to Omaha. Defend your world titles. Okay. It's, you've got money, right? It's not like you're going to be fighting for free. You're going to be making millions. But stay, re- stay relevant. Build your superstar status. You've got an incredible victory. People will forget about you. And this is the problem with the PBC roster over time. Tank is another one. Tank is a superstar. You know, needs to be more active. These guys have got to be fighting three times a year. Terence Crawford fights once a year. 
you know, and arguably the greatest fighter of our generation. Can you, know, you know what Sal wants to do? Sal wants to fight three times right, right. in 2024. Okay, two last quick ones. Can you stop writing to Tank Davis? He keeps trying to dunk on you. It's 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 not it's uh, there there has to be a sort of code that not every DM or email is going to be released. But it's to not the, the code for him, is it? You know. So, no, no. So why don't you? Because I want to make the fight. You know, we made him an offer for ten million dollars plus upside on pay per view, on pay per view and the gate, which pr- could have made him twenty, but. It's like he just doesn't want to discuss it and then he just tweets it and it's like, but like at the end of the day... It doesn't annoy you. I, my emotions are dead in the game. Dead? Other than the glory. With all these guys, him, pff, levels, <laughs> levels. Do you know what I mean? But you just smile. You just smile and move on. You, you kill him with kindness and bury him with a smile. That's all. And you just know how good you are. You believe in yourself. If Javonta Davis wants to post... My offers. I know he's going to do it every time. Okay. I mean, it's what it is. He's that guy. Is it something you would do? Is it something I would do? No. Everyone's different. Good luck to him. But I actually thought $20 million to fight Conor Ben. Nice night at the office. Right. Let's see what he gets to fight Frank Martin. Um, last one. When you're up there on the dais and, and Sam Jones is doing what he's doing, I mean, I loved it. Mm. Is there any part of you that's like, can you chill out? No. You love that. Of course. Sam, that was, Sam, by the way, the, 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 without, the two stops yeah. were amazing. It was great theater. Without Sam, the fight wouldn't have got made, number one. Sam reminds me a lot of me 10 years ago. Okay. Right? When I went to Belfast to do the Quig Frampton presser, and they were all throwing things at me and chatting at me, and I was doing the same thing. Like, not naive, because he's a smart guy, but, you know, fairly new excitable, very outspoken, and, and you need, you know, Shakespeare says all the world's a stage. We're all in this mad play, not just in boxing, but in life. But in boxing, you need characters. So you need Sam Jones. You need Oscar de la Hoya. You need the mystery of Al Heyman. Mm-hmm. You need the 93-year-old Bob Arum, I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere. You know? You need Don King, right? Every now and again pops up, yeah. you know, and... <laughs> He's about eight million for a fight, and you go. That was in a sports centre. How has that happened? Yeah, <laughs> but that—that's the madness of boxing. So, you know, Sam Jones has been brilliant, and he wouldn't let that fight go. You know what happened with that fight? The money that fight was cost him. It had to go on pay per view, right? And DAZN said, "We don't want to offer fights like that on pay per view. We want to offer it as part of your subscription." There's a lot of pay-per-view fights happening. Joshua and Garner, Fury Usyk. They're the kind of fights we need to make available for free for subscribers. But the amount of money is just too much. Mm. So we were like, so I said to Sam, go and talk to other broadcasters and see what they say. Straight away, Sky and one other came back and said, oh, yes, please. We'll do it on pay-per-view. Off we go, off we go. They came back to me and I said to DAZN, you've either got to put the money up here or let it go on pay-per-view on Sky. And our good friends at DAZN said, no, we'll put the money up and we'll make it non-pay-per-view. I didn't think this fight was as big. I knew it was massive, but I didn't think it was as big as Sam Jones told me. We're going to Leeds, a neutral venue. We've done 11,000 tickets like that, all sold out in like a couple of hours, right? It's a massive fight. Could you have gone to a bigger venue? Yes. Yeah. Mistake? But it's okay because Josh didn't want to go to Manchester mm. and... Jack didn't want to go to Scotland. O2 wasn't available. So it's, it's, like, it's like the third biggest arena in the country anyway. But it just shows you when you, get, when you get it right, when you get the rivalry right, the narrative right, the two city press tours open to the public. That was great. You've right? got to do more of that. Yeah, we have. But also, when you open it to the public, sometimes there's a rivalry. And sure. you know, two guys you ain't got to say anything to, just let them go. Yeah. You know, Got a little Jack, physical there. Yeah, it did, yeah, but but not too much. Right, you right. Know? And, you know, I'm excited for that fight. And it falls one week after. You know, you could have a run there of Haney Garcia, Catrell Taylor, Canelo against Mungia. Wow. That's what we live for. And that's why, as I said before, sorry for the plugs, to zone the global home of boxing. Number one platform in the world, unrivaled, and everyone's going to continue to see. 
Amen. Um, you know, the chat, we have a chat here, and uh, they keep saying, is is Eddie going to demand a rematch in the darts? But you were just on a flight, Awful, and yeah. I don't want I don't want to put you through that. You're not that. coming to Riyadh next week? Or you are? Well, you know, I don't... Surprise you, guest. I was just going to pop in. You, you know, are, I was just going to show up and say... Well, why don't we have a game of darts in Riyadh? Oh, me versus you. Yeah. I they saw you the other night or the other day. I killed Alex Pereira. Did you see that hit the triple 20 yeah, I know. with my back against the wall? So you don't want the smoke here. You want I'll do it. I'll do it. No, I, mean, I, I, just, I don't want to. You know, sometimes I feel like, if I be honest, when you do those interviews, I feel like you're like almost like a dancing monkey for these guys. They're asking you to sing. It's like, it's like, a, I do. it's enough. No? Whatever. Sometimes you don't say like, guys, I do 9,000 interviews. That's do I need I to sing? I the other day. We, we've had a lot of requests for you to sing. Can you sing us out? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Like, no. No, what are I you? Like fucking, uh, yeah. Mask singer. Yes. Something like that. It's a know? lot, no? no? Anyway, let's just do it. Just okay, for just sorry. for fun. Just for the kicks. Um, thanks for breaking the news that I'm going to be in Riyadh. I didn't. You did. No. <laughs> Am I going to... Uh, where's my thing? Okay. My first time. I don't know if you know this. I always find with my height that these lights are a problem. Listen. Uh, are we sharing the darts? No, no, no. Here, here, here. These All right, are yours. Okay. All right, great. Um, Can we add three warm-ups? Absolutely. Okay. But uh, I, just want to I just want to respond to what you just said, the accusation regarding the lights. We actually drop the lights when we know you're really? coming in because it's a home court advantage for us here. Okay, that's... I would have actually taken that. What, what I, get that? A bit, I get a bit nervous at the... 45? You know, yeah, so do, go do you know, Do you know who signed this, by the way? Michael Van Gerwen. Michael Van Gerwen and uh, Bully Boy. What about Luke Littler, eh? Uh, what a legend. Unbelievable. S 17 now or 16? So am I going first? Oh uh, Yeah, you go first. This is what you do, right? Yeah, and by you... the way, this is an official dartboard courtesy of our friends over at uh, Windmouth. Uh, the PDC. And Windmouth. Yeah, and Windmouth, of course. Um, all right, here we go. That's Which... a treble 20. That's a triple, wow. Okay. I was do you just want me to ask... stop now or? No, okay. no, that's okay. Imagine if I banged in a 180. Oh the my sings God. Would be, would I'm be, a bit nervous now. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, what is that? What are, we, what are we playing for? We didn't even put stakes. Well, now I've got that treble I know, 20. I thought it was about like... 40 grand. Okay, no, all right, okay. fair enough, fair enough. Right. Oh, gosh. I actually think I could get a 180. Look, and by the way, I saw that your foot was over Leave one. You can't get that on uh, camera. Oh, close. Oh, Whoa. my God, no <laughs> way. He hit the no light. Way. He hit the light. Was... No what way. happened? Did you hit the light? It was the triple 20. Ah, uh, you know yourself, Eddie. Uh, so what would that be? Is 80. That a, is that really a triple 20? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. 80. 80. So you've only got 80 to beat, Ariel. Nothing. No problem for you. I only need two darts. Do you know who's still the champion here? Who's never... We've never been able to surpass hey. Sky Nicholson. 91. Really? 91? 91. I can't believe it. I just needed my other dart. I would have been there as well. Been there, yes. I think he was going in the one, actually. Do you mind giving me some space? Sorry, mate. You're a little bit crowding me here. Um, all right. Do I get my three warm-ups, too? <laughs> I, I don't need warm-ups. No, you can have warm-up. No, it's okay. No, no, because I don't want any excuses. Ah, that was close to a 25, but I, I hit, what is that, an 11, Joe? Yeah, yeah. 11. Yeah. Oh, again with the almost... It's a almost one, isn't it? One. Is that a, a one? Again with the almost one. Yeah. So if I get if I get a 60... What did you get? 80. 80. Am I fucked? You, you completely. Uh, uh, oh, I got a triple four. 12. Yeah, 12. 23. 24. Yeah, not good. Okay, one last one, one last one, Come please. Then. Okay, now, is there proper stakes? <laughs> what are the proper stakes? <laughs> you're like, you're, you're worse than my kids. First of three. Uh, First of five. Okay, this okay. is it. If, wait, wait, um, if I win, I get to walk out Francis Ngannou on March 8th. You are doing it now, aren't you? Is that, is that if what you're if doing? I win, I fly, I go to Riyadh, I fly, I walk out Francis. Okay. All there right, here we go. No pressure, by the way. Here, this, is this, for, this is ridiculous. This is for the, uh, the Hearn family legacy. Oh my God, that was so close. What was that? As a treble one. Uh, just, okay. just yes, yes, yes. Uh, 20. Ah, oh, 18. 18. 39. For, uh, 39. 39. That's a nice score for you to, to beat. Uh, a nice little plug for my good friends at the PDC. I, I hear that uh, you'll be back at the theater. Madison Square in, Garden. I think May 31st, I Correct. was told. So we'll be there. 39. 18. That really gives you a great chance. Oh, that's 26. And you got 39. You, huh? need, you, you need 13. Oh, oh you've done it. Ah, uh, yeah. You've done it. One, one. Tiebreaker. Come on then. All right, let's go, Eddie. I mean, let's go. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, Most people must have logged off by now. Oh my. No, this. They love this. Is they it? love yeah. the darts. Okay. Oh, they love the darts. Okay. Here we go, Eddie. Me versus you for all the marbles. Don't fuck it up. You, what do I'm, we got? A five. A twenty. No. A one. Twenty-six. Uh, I feel good. I should have. I should have quit while I was on top. Oh my god. Twenty-six. Um, 
So I'll get to Don't walk out. Don't overthink it. Just I'll, I'll get to walk out Katie and Francis. That's what we're playing for here. Here we go. Shout out to my good friend Brian Peters. Great guy. You like him? Top man. Top man. Led to Carbone with him, right? You know that he's uh, Ray Ford's manager. Oh, yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Will he be there this weekend? He will be. What'd you get again? Uh, 126. Okay. No, 26. Oh, oh, that's great news. No, oh, it's, no 18. it's an 18. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. terrible news. Oh, that's wow. great news. That's 23. And you got now, 26? Now, all you've got to do... Right? <laughs> all you've got to do is hit that there. Why? You've got to finish with a treble sure, 20. Sure, 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 sure. Come on. Eyes closed, Come on. Word. Treble 20. And we'll see you on March 8th. Oh, no! <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, there it is. 29. Eddie Hearn. Awful darts. Well done, mate. Well see done you to you. Yes, yeah, see you out there. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.